Are you looking for the safest way to work remotely and keep your location information private? During your search, you've probably come across the term dedicated IP addresses from many of the popular VPN service providers. But will a dedicated IP address from a VPN service provider work for your particular use case? Today, I'll demonstrate two solutions and show you how to set up a dedicated IP address on your VPN travel router from GLINet. Let's get it. First, let's talk in general about how VPNs work. VPN service providers offer their clients a different IP address than the public IP address of their internet service provider by encrypting the traffic between the server and the client device. The new encrypted tunnel allows the client device to appear to be in the location of the VPN server. Sounds good, right? However, VPN services share IP addresses among all their clients on a particular server. This means that any clients connected to a server will appear to be communicating from the same device. But why is this a problem? One issue arises when a client tries to access a website and is constantly prevented from doing so without having to verify that you're not a robot. <laughs> The reason the website needs verification is that it detects many connections from the same IP address of the VPN service provider. Another example is when a client tries to access any of the popular streaming media sites and receive a message that they're using a proxy or VPN. The streaming site knows that you're using a VPN because it sees multiple logged in users with the same IP address. So what do public VPN service providers do to solve this problem? Dedicated IP addresses or static IP addresses as they're often known are just one tool that VPN service providers use to solve this problem. The primary distinction of a static IP or a dedicated IP is that it is not shared among the users of the public VPN services servers. Each client is given their own dedicated IP address so all communication between that client and the internet will appear to be from a static IP. This largely solves the issues of capture verifications and streaming service detection. But the real question is, how well does this work from preventing your company from determining your location of your remote work computer? Well, the answer is it works just as well as a non-dedicated IP address. The one main benefit from a dedicated IP address from a public VPN service provider is that it is a unique IP to a single user. However, that IP address still comes from a public data center and there are public databases that list the IP networks of VPN service providers and data centers. These databases of IP networks of the VPN service providers and data centers make it easy for websites to determine if a user is using an IP address dedicated or not from a VPN service provider. So what's the best option for remote workers who wanna keep their location private? As I've discussed before in previous videos, the answer is still a personal VPN system. The personal VPN system is a combination of a server router and a client router using VPN encryption software like WireGuard or OpenVPN. The personal VPN system is owned by you and does not have recurring fees. Because you own the system, which is set up at your house or the residence of a family member or person you trust, your IP address is not shared with anyone outside of that location. Furthermore, there's no similar database that exists for residential IP addresses of internet service providers. You also have complete control over your VPN setup and it's completely private and personal to you. Obviously, because you have complete control, one of the biggest challenges with the personal VPN system is that it requires technical knowledge to set up and use. But don't worry, I've helped hundreds of customers in 21 different countries set up their personal VPN systems. You can find a link to get started to work together in the description notes below and also above. Another issue with the personal VPN system is that it can be a single point of failure. It's a site-to-site -site connection between a client and a server router and if anything happens to one of those two locations, you're down, the system is down. What I recommend to avoid a single point of failure scenario is to set up multiple servers at different residences in the same city. This ensures redundancy and continuous operation even if one location is down. Now let's see how to set up a dedicated IP address using NordVPN on your Geo iNet VPN travel router. First thing you need to do if you haven't done so already is go over to mexaplans.com and get access to NordVPN. There's an affiliate link on my site that will help you save some money and uh, support the channel. So please go over to mexaplans.com, hit the shop link and go ahead and get your dedicated IP 
if that's what you want to do for NordVPN. So one of the things that I like about NordVPN is you have just a ton of different options and I still use and recommend NordVPN all the time, particularly for streaming media or just if you need a quick VPN to do something with, right? Whether it's banking or what have you, NordVPN is still, in my opinion, the most flexible and one of the best that's out there. So one of the things you'll need to do is once you're connected to NordVPN and you've paid for and you have a dedicated IP address, which is an additional fee than their normal VPN service, is you need to go and download the configuration, the OpenVPN configuration file for your particular server that you're connecting to. So I know that my server is 10600, and so I need to go and download the VPN file for that particular device. All right, so once you have identified your VPN server that your dedicated IP address runs on, you need to go to nordvpn.com forward slash OVPN. The reason we wanna use OpenVPN on this one is because we'll generally use WireGuard, or I generally set up WireGuard as the de facto standard for your personal VPN. So having OpenVPN as a secondary source is a great idea. Now, these are in order by country. So you need to get down to the US servers. So we'll just move down to the US servers. And once we get to US, you'll notice that they're in order numerically, but they start at like 10,000, which are the specialty servers. So I want 10,600 as my specialty server. So I'm just gonna scroll through this list and find 10,600 because I know that's the server in Miami that my dedicated IP address is connected to. Once I get 10,600, I'm gonna download the UDP version of that, which is OpenVPN gives you the options of both UDP or TCP, but I'll take the UDP because it's gonna be a little bit faster than the TCP connection. And if you don't know why UDP is faster than TCP, definitely check out the VPN's Essentials course. In the free preview of the VPN's Essentials course, I go through exactly how computers communicate. So check that out if you get a chance. All right, so now that I have my OpenVPN configuration file, what I can do next is go to OpenVPN client. As you can see, I've already set this up, but in order to use any of the Nord servers, you need to make sure that you have your service credentials. And that was the first part of what I showed you. And then you also have a service credential password, which is just a hash. So you need to make sure that that information is in here and not your regular username and password for NordVPN. And this is going to be your username and password that is your service hash. So what I would wanna do from here is actually go, probably go back up here and just copy this information. Uh, which is my service information here, my service tags. So once I connect to the NordVPN Miami uh, OpenVPN profile configuration, um, you can see the server name. Right now it's using, the, it's connecting via DNS. So it's us10600.nordvpn.com is their server address. And once I flip over to that server, this is the IP address of the server that I'm connected to. But if I go out to uh, what is my IP address.com, this is the IP address of my dedicated server that I've selected in Miami. Now, one of the things that I will point out is that it shows that this is from the TT1 data center in Miami. So if I look at this, I can tell immediately that I'm coming from a data center. But before we do anything else, let's go ahead and run a speed test and see how fast this VPN is running over my uh, dedicated IP address. 25, 26, maybe 27 megabits per second down. Now I'm connected via a gigabit port on my Mac mini. And yeah, these are the speeds I'm getting through my dedicated IP address in Miami. Next, I guess since we're doing speed tests, let me just flip this over, turn off OpenVPN, flip it over to WireGuard and check out my WireGuard performance. This is my personal WireGuard setup. This is my personal VPN server in Atlanta. And, I'm, and now I'm gonna go and run the speed test again. Here you can see I'm connected to my private residential IP address that is in Atlanta connected. Uh, and my speeds are much, 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 much faster. Again, this is, you know, you don't have all the options in terms of redundancy 
that you do with a public VPN server, but this is definitely going to be a better working scenario for you than using uh, uh, a public VPN service. Now, let's go back and do one last thing. Let's go back to what is my IP address.com. So what is my IP address.com is a site that tries to locate you and kind of give you details about what is my IP. If you click here and do show complete details, and I think I've shown this in a couple other videos, anytime you're using a public VPN service, um, you will see that it knows, right? It tells you that you're using a VPN server. So when I click on that, it, you know, it kind of says, hey, you're using and, and this is on my share. This is on my dedicated IP address, not a shared IP address, but it knows that I'm using a public VPN service. Let's go to VPNAPI.io and see if we can run a test there. VPN API, their whole thing is to detect VPNs and proxies. And sure enough, as soon as we hit it, it tells us that we're connected to a VPN. If you see here. So even when using a dedicated IP address, it's easy for them to determine that you're using a VPN because of that database that I was telling you about. That just gives you an idea. Now, contrast that. Let's go over to switch the VPN services again. So we're going to stop the, the Nord VPN and we're going to go to my private uh, WireGuard server that is located in Atlanta. It's just another one of these GL INA 1800 routers running the WireGuard protocol and doing that when I connect to that server and if I go to what is my IP address.com I'm back in Atlanta if I hit show complete details it has no idea it says services none detected so it has no idea that I'm using uh, any type of technology to uh, an encrypted VPN tunnel between Mexico and Atlanta also if I go to VPN API.io again it doesn't know that I'm using any type of VPN uh, technology. So that is a reason to use the personal VPN. It looks like you're working exactly from your remote location from your house. All right. So as I stated earlier in the video, using a dedicated IP is just one tool to maintain your location privacy. However, for working abroad, it's better to use a personal VPN system. I've made several videos on this subject and I would invite you to check out this video over here. I would also love to work with you to keep your location information private. You can schedule a call at the link in the description below. Until next time, Mexi Plans Monty, I'm out.